What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Camp Blood. So I have the uh, DVD right here. I got a little triple pack DVD. So we got the front right there. Very nice. You got a nice little killer clown there. And then you got the back. It says Camp Blood Trilogy. And you got all the... Uh, well, not all of the Camp Blood movies, but you got the, the first three right there. Because I believe there's like eight or something, and then some spinoffs. There's, there's all kinds. Who knows? In a couple years, maybe there'll, there'll be, you know, 36 Camp Blood movies. I don't know. I can't call it. But anyways, uh, I picked up the Camp Blood trilogy DVD because uh, I had it in my watch list for a while on eBay. I had my eye on it. I've never seen these movies before. Um, I don't even recall how I found out about them. I probably went you know, down some weird rabbit hole uh, on YouTube as you know, as you do, you're, you're, you're looking into one movie and then you're like, you find some video on some crazy obscure weird movie from from back in the day, so uh, yeah, I don't know how I found out about the Camp Blood movies, but for some reason I've had this like morbid curiosity where I, I want to check them out. Um, yeah, so I I didn't think they would be great, which which might sound crazy, like hey, why'd you why would you like seek these out and buy the DVD if you if you uh, you know, didn't think they would be great. You know, I can't call it. I don't know. Like, maybe I'm a masochist. Maybe I'm insane. Um, maybe all of the above. I don't know. But, um, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just curious and I just want to check, check stuff out. And I kind of like these, like, rare, obscure movies that I, I'm just like, I don't know. Maybe the, it's, I'm interested in them because they're, like, they're like hard to find. It's like a little treasure hunt. It's like a little scavenger hunt. I don't know. But anyways, um, I wanted to check these out. And after checking out the first one, I'm going to, this is going to sound crazy. Um, I actually did not think it was that bad. I thought it was decent for what it was. Okay. I going into this movie, I thought it was going to be way worse. I thought it was going to be like extremely hard to get through i'm telling you what the, the 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 main the main thing that might turn people off uh about this movie is is the the look it's it's shot on video whatever video camera they used was like the grainiest worst home video camera in existence like the movie looks terrible it's so it's so grainy i mean i've seen you know shot on video movies uh and you know none of them look great but this movie looks like worse considerably considerably worse than most other uh shot on video movies even ones that came out before it so the look of this movie is terrible and the 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 like the scale is so small like it's just people running around the woods and there's like it's pretty much just one location it's like people in the woods they probably just went and filmed at some nature park or whatever if you can get past the look and the fact that you know it's super small scale super low budget i think it's not that bad like the, really the acting was not that bad. I thought the acting was going to be way worse. The acting was was way better than I expected. And there was actually some, like, the characters were likable. There was some fun dialogue. Um, the, the, the music in this, like, the main theme, the main score was good. It was good, like, creepy horror movie music. I thought the music was, was fantastic. Like, I really liked the, the music in this actually and uh, yeah like the acting wasn't bad the the music was actually like the music was pretty good and uh, and yeah like I wasn't bored of course there wasn't like too much story it's a slasher movie but 
I wasn't like bored out of my mind. I didn't want to just like this wasn't an absolute chore to get through. So that that was a uh, surprising. But anyways, yeah. So my my overall opinion is, you know what? I I thought this movie was decent, decent for what it was. Um, so let me get into the plot summary here. So you have these these uh, two couples. And they're going on this trip to this abandoned campground, which is called Camp Blackwood, which I thought was funny because uh, my brother showed me this video of of this guy. Uh, I wrote his name down, uh, Randall Thimes, and he's like he's like on the same channel as like all the Dracula flow videos. I think he's like the fictional CEO of the record label that puts out like. The Dracula flow videos but there's this there's this video with uh Randall Thimes and he's like you know what like it's like day in the life of Randall Thimes he's like you know what I wake up every day I go to 7-eleven I, I get my I get my blackwood and my black and my <laughs> which um I don't know it's just funny because it's like it's I don't know I don't know why that's funny that he calls a backwood a blackwood but it's just that whole video, like his delivery is so funny. And he's just, um, he's just like walking in, like they have like real footage of him just walking in the 7-Eleven. He's like, and then, and then later in the day, I go to Starbucks and I ask if they have a, a Blackwood and a Black and Mild and, and they, and they don't have it. But, uh, I don't know. I just had to mention Randall Thimes. Shouts out to, um, Randall Thimes, big CEO status, big business, making big moves. You already know. Shouts out Randall Thimes because, uh, I don't know, the, the, the name of the camp in this camp, uh, Blackwood, reminded me of, you know, going to 7-Eleven and purchasing, uh, you know, Blackwoods and Black and Miles. So, shouts out Randall Thimes. But anyways, back into the, uh, <laughs> back into the, uh, plot summary. So, you got, uh, these two couples, they're going to this this abandoned camp called Camp Blackwood and uh, you know as they're as they're driving there there's this there's this one uh, local uh, his name's Brownlee Thatcher and he's pretty much discount uh, discount crazy Ralph from Friday the 13th and or dollar dollar store crazy Ralph so anyways Dollar Store Crazy Ralph is like, hey, you know what, kids? You know, you're, you're, you're bumping your loud music. You're eating your fast foods. Get out of town. You're ruining this nice rural community. This is a nice family community. All you crazy kids coming here, you're going to ruin the place. And he, you know, he's, you know, just talking smack. And he warns the two couples of this killer clown on the loose. And they're like, you know, whatever. They, they dismiss it. And um, once they once they get in uh, to the woods, once they get into the abandoned campground, they meet this woman named Harris, and she acts as as their guide through the woods. And one night they're having a little campfire, and uh, Harris tells them, you know, because they're all telling scary stories, telling ghost stories. Harris tells them the story of this killer clown in the area and basically the story is um, quite a while ago there was this gentleman he got he he got fired from his job and he comes home and his wife is in bed with another guy so he he loses it he snaps and he uh, he takes uh, his wife and uh, the cheater into the woods he kills them and then he's n never you know he's never found he's never uh, seen again and locals tell the story that you know he still roams the woods and and kills people so that is the story everyone is freaked out but then you know they just they just uh, you know go to bed uh, and then they wake up the next day and Harris is dead. She's burned to a crisp. She's been, you know, burned by their little campfire. So uh, they think it was the the clown, 
and they're all freaking out. They want to, they want to, you know, get the, get the heck out of town. So they're freaking and like right after they're, they, they find, well not right after, but yeah, after they find, uh, Harris dead, they actually, uh, they're actually pursued by the killer clown and they, you know, they're getting, the, the remaining characters are getting killed off by this killer clown. So that is the, uh, the basic plot summary. Um, I kind of, I kind of, uh, in like early on in the, the video, I kind of talked about quite a few points that I had written down towards the, uh, the top of my notes. So I'm just going to get into some, some other, uh, points. Uh, so there's this one, one of the characters, one of the main characters, his name is Jay and he's actually, uh, played by the guy who I, I, did, I reviewed the movie, uh, Scarecrow on the channel. There's like, there's like, uh, three of them. And I believe the first one was from like 2002. But anyways, um, in the first movie, uh, there's this like guy who's like a nerd and he's bullied and he becomes this killer scarecrow. The guy who plays the, the scarecrow before he turns into a scarecrow plays this character Jay. And th I thought this guy was kind of funny. He was kind of like the comic relief. Um, this, the, I thought there's this really funny instance with him was, you know, when they're driving to the camp, like this guy is like, he's just chain smoking throughout the movie and his girlfriend was wearing perfume or sprayed some perfume or something and he's he's like just getting angry with her he's he's mad he's like why are you spraying this perfume you're stinking up the car like st I don't want you wearing all this perfume and he's saying that while he, he, he's smoking a cig. I just, I thought that was so funny, like so hypocritical. And he just barely has the window cracked and he's just smoking a cig. Every, you know, everyone's being exposed to this secondhand smoke, all that nasty smell. And he's like getting mad at his girlfriend because she's wearing a little perfume. So um, that, that was really funny. And then another funny instance with his character is... Uh, pretty pretty much like later on in the movie he he just like turns around and like his his girlfriend is running and he you know he's scared because the killer's on the loose and he has a knife in his hand and he turns around and he accidentally stabs his own girlfriend which was um hilarious like I was just I was like straight up laughing out loud it, I mean how how does that happen I mean you would at least look right but um when when he's like holding his dying girlfriend in his arms this is what he says i'm not joking this is real life this is what he says in the movie he says i he says i'd never do anything to hurt you motherfucker you just did something to hurt her you not only did you do something to hurt her you literally just you literally just kilted her bro saying i'd never do anything to hurt you like all you had to do was change a couple words in that in that line. Instead of saying I'd never do anything to hurt you, say baby, I never meant to hurt you. That's all you had to say. But the fact that he said I'd never do anything to hurt you was hilarious cuz it's like you just you just did something to hurt her. Like am am I missing something? Like are we am I, I, am I watching the right movie here? Like, what the heck? So, I thought that was absolutely hilarious. That was that was gold. That I mean, best line of dialogue in the movie. I never do anything to hurt you. Uh, that's a perfect thing to say after you stab your girlfriend to death accidentally. Uh, so yeah, that was great. Um, I thought it was funny. There's this other character, Steve, and he he has this like uh, big old knife in his hand. And he's, you know, pointing it at the killer and he like runs up to the killer with the knife and the killer just runs away from him. I'm like, is, what, aren't, aren't you guys doing this wrong? Like, isn't Steve supposed to be running away from the killer? Like he, 
like Steve is just pursuing the killer and the killer just immediately just run runs away like a like a little bitch like I'm like I was just I was like I had to do a double take I'm like the 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 killer's running away I mean eventually they have this like showdown in this kind of little waterfall area so it's not like the 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 killer's like a total wimp but uh I I just thought I just thought that was funny that like he Steve comes at the killer with the with a knife and like immediately the killer just like runs away um that that was gold that was great stuff um and then oh yeah I don't know if I talked about the kills in the movie but actually another thing that surprised me about the movie is there was actually some decent uh blood and some decent gore and you actually got to you know see the kills there was a couple cutaways but most of the kills were not cutaways which I was not expecting I was expecting every single kill in this to be a cutaway because it's a cheap uh, shot on video movie it's, it's like a micro budget movie so I expected the kills to be way worse the kills in this were bloody you actually got to see some you know some some gore there was machete machetes going through people's limbs it wasn't bad but it was okay it was like how they did most of the kills is <clears throat> they they probably had you know one machete that was like a fully intact machete that the killer was holding you know when he was like swiping at people and th but then when you saw the machete in someone's arm or in someone's neck it was, you know, I think it was one of those gag machetes where it just has like a little circle cut cut out of the side. And, um, you know, that's fine. It's like a low budget movie. You got to do what you got to do. And it worked. It didn't look bad. They put some blood near it. It looked good. Like it, it was, hey, I'll take that over a cutaway. Like for, for what it was for like a low budget movie like this, you know, I, that's, I thought the kills were serviceable. But it was funny because when Steve was killed... He was just like holding up, like there's like a, I think, yeah, the machete was like through his head and he's just holding it. Like he's, he just like keeps on holding it as he's dead. He's like sliding down this, uh, this like piece of rock and he's just continuously like holding the machete. I just thought that was funny because like then you know it's clearly just a machete with a little, with a little half circle cut out of it because like he, the character, like the actor, has to hold it, or else it's just gonna like fall. So um, I thought, even though the kills in this were serviceable and decent, I thought that kill was funny because, the, like, then you know, like you know, it's it's just a fake machete with a little, you know, half circle cut out of it. So yeah, I had to mention that as well. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, towards the end of the movie, you have uh, like quite a few of the main characters playing different. Well, yeah, not towards the end. Like at at the very end of the movie, you have uh, quite a few of the main characters playing uh, different characters. Which initially I thought it was like a they were trying to say like the whole movie was a dream. But then when I was like reading up about this movie, that's not the case. They're just playing different characters, which I thought was funny as well. That's like you know when people you're making like a homemade movie, like a backyard movie. You have a bunch of people playing different characters I just thought that that was kind of fun and uh, initially when I was watching it I just thought hey maybe everything was all supposed to be a dream but I, I don't think it is supposed to be a dream so I don't know I thought that was was kind of you know fun it's like this this movie does have like the home movie uh, like made at home movie feel so I thought that was kind of fun and then um, something something that I want this is the last point that I have so I'm not talking about this DVD cover because this is like a, this came out like later on, but the initial um, the initial DVD uh, cover for for Camp Blood it's kind of like a purple cover with this like almost like cartoon looking clown in it. I think the initial DVD cover or maybe it was v I think this movie came out on VHS first. But yeah, I think the purple cover was like the the DVD cover that came out in like 2002 or something. But anyways, that cover I think is really cool and 
I, I don't know, it just has like a cool aesthetic to it. And, you know, I just, I want to know like how wide of a uh, release did this movie get? Like, of course, this movie's not coming out in theaters, but, you know, like th it was released on DVD. Like, was this in a lot of video stores? Was this, um, was this, uh, you know, like, were they selling it? Like, could you just buy the DVD in quite a few retail stores? Like, I don't know. And, and I was just thinking, you know, the, the cover it, is so cool. And like back, back in like 2000, 2002, you, you know, you could still get away with that. You could just sell a movie straight off the cover because, you know, video stores were still big back then, you know, so you could just sell a movie straight off the cover. So I wonder if, if Camp Blood like actually made a healthy profit from DVD sales because this, this movie, when you watch it, like, I, it, you know, this is micro budget. They probably made this movie, they probably spent like a couple, couple thousand tops, a couple thousand dollars tops on this movie. So, um, I, like, I wonder if they just like totally finessed everyone and they're like, okay, we're going to make this movie for no money. We're going to, but it's going to be feature length. Um, we're going to, you know, market it towards horror fans. People, in, it's going to have a great cover. People in video stores will eat this up and will make a healthy profit by the time they buy the DVD. You know, they already, they already paid us. Boom. Like they only need to watch it once. Everyone only needs to watch it once for us to like make a healthy profit. Like, I wonder if they just totally finessed everyone and if, and if this movie actually made money. I hope it did because I, I'm a sleaze bag myself and I like uh, sleazy activities like that. And I like like sleazy salesman behavior because, you know, you know, I like, you know, getting money. I'm trying to be on my Jordan Belfort type stuff. So I don't know. I, I don't know if this movie did make a lot in DVD sales, but I, I hope it did because um, I like the spirit of that. Just like, you know, making a super cheap um, you know, shitty looking movie, having a great cover and making bank. I can, I can get behind that. That's what I'm trying to do. That's my next, uh, business venture. That's my next entrepreneurial venture, you know? So yeah, that was the last, uh, point that I want to get into. So I'm not, now I'm going to get into my recommendation and head out. So even though I thought this movie was, you know, mildly entertaining and definitely, it was definitely better than I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't know. I don't think I would recommend it. Uh, like it's not, it's not a good movie by any means, but I, I found it mildly enjoyable. Uh, you know, would I watch it again? No, but yeah, I had a decent time with it, but I don't think other people will. So I would not recommend it. Yeah. Like, I mean, you can't even find this movie anywhere anyway. So yeah, just live vicariously through me. Just watch this review, but you don't really need to watch the movie. Um, so yeah, that's been my recommendation and that has been my review of Camp Blood. Thank you all very much for watching and peace out.